Hello dearlings, once again, I greet you as always with so much love in my heart and with a prayer on my lips. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, how wonderful it is that we don't need to explain ourselves to you. You know us completely. You understand us better than we understand ourselves. You know our strengths and our weaknesses our joys and our sorrows, our fears and our hopes. You love us unconditionally. Help us to love you more deeply, to be gentle on ourselves as you are gentle with us, and to love one another with kindness and compassion. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. On Sunday, I dedicated two dear little boys, Charles and Thomas, to the Lord, giving thanks to him for the gift that they are to their families. On Wednesday evening, I prayed with a colleague of mine from our Clifton days, Wendy, and anointed her and committed her to the Lord. She died at two o'clock that night. Tomorrow, I should be doing the wedding service of my darling Kath and Matt, the second date that has had to be postponed. All of these remind us that life is precious, and so are people, particularly our family and our friends. I think that 2020 has caused many of us to examine our priorities to value the people that God has put into our lives, to appreciate our blessings, to never take anyone or anything for granted, and to be grateful for the simple everyday things that we encounter. In this Advent season, as we prepare to celebrate the birth of Jesus, my daily readings have often been taken from Isaiah, I'd like to read two passages for you. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2, 6, and 7. Then Isaiah 40, 3 to 11. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And our second reading, a voice of one calling. In the desert, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all mankind together will see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out, and I said, What shall I cry? All men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. You who bring good tidings to Zion, 
Go up on a high mountain, you who bring good tidings to Jerusalem. Lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Two wonderful readings as we prepare to celebrate Christ's birth. The last verse of the second reading says, Lift up your voice. Do not be afraid. I believe that God's message for us today is be prayerful and careful. Do not be fearful. In these times, it's easy to give way to fear. If we really put our trust in God, though, we can overcome fear. 1 John 4, 18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. And 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. If we read the newspapers and watch the news on television, we realise that the COVID-19 scourge is increasing and numbers of people being infected are rising daily. So first of all, be prayerful. Pray for the people who are working on producing a vaccine. Pray for those in the medical profession who are putting their lives at risk. Pray for those who have lost loved ones who contracted the coronavirus and pray for those who are recovering from it. Pray that people around the world do all that they possibly can to prevent the virus from spreading. Secondly, be careful. Wear a mask, sanitize, avoid unnecessary contact with other people. Stay away from crowds. Protect yourself and those around you. You know that I've mumbled about my family putting certain restrictions on me, but I'm really so grateful to them for doing so because it shows that they love me and care for me and want me around for a few more years. I appreciate them and I am being good. Someone asked me recently when I thought I'd be going to Canada to see my fa family. My reply was, I'm not allowed to go to pick and pay, so I definitely won't be allowed to go to Canada. Christmas Day is two weeks today. This year, most people will be having a different Christmas. For some, it will be a sad Christmas without family. For some, it will be a lonely Christmas. I pray that it will be a holy Christmas, a simple Christmas, a Christ-filled Christmas. The other day I was explaining to Ben and Sam why we shouldn't spell Christmas Xmas. It literally is taking Christ out of Christmas. His birth could not have been more ordinary but he was the greatest gift the world has ever been given. May our gifts be simpler this year too. An old suggestion for presents for children is something they want, something they need, something to wear, something to read. Wise advice. Thinking of reading, you might want to do something for your children or grandchildren next Advent that I have done for the past three years. Throughout the year, I buy second-hand books. I wrap them all and number them from 1 to 25. The first is unwrapped and read on the 1st of December, and the last one is opened on Christmas Day. Far more meaningful and longer-lasting than chocolates. We'll be spending Christmas on a farm in the Midlands. We'll listen to online Christmas services. Yes, we'll really miss church and our church family, but we'll be safe, breathing in the country air 
and appreciating being alive and being together. Let's not focus too much on gifts this year. Let's focus on Christ. Let's give gifts of kindness, compassion, care, gratitude, appreciation and our time. Phone people who live alone. Give toiletries to the man who sells newspapers on the corner or the woman who collects cardboard to earn a living. Christmas, as we know, can be dulled by familiarity or spoilt by busyness. Slow down. Take time out. Love. Laugh. Care. Think of the Advent wreath. Four red candles for the four Sundays leading up to Christmas. They represent hope, joy, peace and love. The middle candle is white and is lit on Christmas Day. Jesus, the light of the world. May he lighten our darkness this Christmas. And may we spread his hope, joy, love and peace. Let's pray. Jesus, who to us is the expression of what God is and of what God does, help us to get our thinking straight about Christmas. May we see it not just as a fairy tale from the past, but as possessing great truths for our world today. Jesus, born in a stable, May we honour you by serving those who are homeless right now. Jesus, a refugee in Egypt, may our concern for today's refugees be part of our worship to you. Jesus, bringer of peace, may our striving for peace in the world be part of our Christmas offering to you. Jesus, who received gifts from men, help us to give ourselves anew to you, that you may make us the kind of people you want us to be. And Jesus, who gave all for us, accept our lives and set them on fire with love for you and for all mankind. We ask this in your name, and for your sake, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I love you. Be careful. Be prayerful. Isaiah 35 says, Strengthen the feeble hands. Steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, Be strong. Do not fear. Your God will come. Emmanuel, God with us, our God will come. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look so kindly on you and give you peace. May the Lord keep you safe and that wonderful peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds and the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and all those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. God bless you.